we thought that the best way to bring people together is to show them a gateway to the best deals in Silicon Valley or Israel. So it's not bringing them together because they are Jewish or because they care. Most likely they don't care that much because otherwise they would come together. But no one can, can resist the opportunity to invest in the best companies and to invest with the best investors in Silicon Valley. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by J Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley, in partnership with Lomitech, and sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Upwest, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, and Birthright Excel, and in media partnership with CTech. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. I'm really, really excited and honored for this episode because I get to have a discussion with an amazing friend, mentor, and colleague, Odette Kharimoni, managing partner of J Ventures. Odette is an investor, entrepreneur, and journalist. Since 2005, he has invested in over 70 companies, five of which became unicorns, as is currently the managing partner and co-founder of the J Ventures Fund, a capitalist kibbutz in Silicon Valley. Odette is active in philanthropic organizations and has been a board member at the Jewish Federation San Francisco, JFCS, Friends of Hebrew University, Icon, Intro, and more. Welcome, my friend, Oded. Oded Chirmoni, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. How are you? Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm fine. With you, it's always good. So good to be here with you. Uh, I'm so excited to talk about venture capital. No, not in the traditional way of venture capital. Upside down with venture capital, uh, Oded, managing director and partner uh, with Jim Koshland at uh, J Ventures. But it's not just the two of you. There's uh, hundreds more behind this phenomenal group that, that I'm so proud to be a part of and, and the group that is actually presenting this show. Uh, and so uh, we're going to put all of that aside for now because this episode isn't just about J Ventures, but it's about this the different ideas of, of venture capital, the role of VCs, and that you don't actually have to do it in the most traditional way in order to do it in, both in, a, in a, the right and interesting way. So, Dad, tell me a little bit about yourself just a bit, and then how you know, what is it about J Ventures that makes it so special? So, I'm, I think over the years I was an entrepreneur, and I was uh, a social entrepreneur also, uh, Shomrim, Icon, uh, IETI. Um, intro and others, and and I've been a partner at Rhodium, then uh, many years in, in Silicon Valley, now in my 11th year. But over those years, I was looking at different models of, of um, that combined, by the way, social entrepreneurship in a way, um, a community based, and also what I think works and doesn't work in a regular VC model, which is a GP. That, that's the way most VCs are structured that way. I mean, not most, all of the VCs are structured that way. You have a GP, which is a general partner. He, it's a very, usually one, three, five people, and they manage LPs who are limited partners. And that's the way it was structured about 50, 60 years ago in Silicon Valley. And that's the way we still do it. And, and the, the compensation is the same, the, the, the way you, you manage it. But then you see that in, in the COVID days and before that, things started to change, right? We saw that large, big funds started doing seed rounds. And we saw that uh, we have multi-stage VCs. And we saw that we have um, industry-oriented VCs. And we saw that we have CVCs that are coming from the you know, a, a corporate VCs. So there are different ways of really building this kind of, uh, of, of vehicle to invest in startup. On the other hand, who's your customer? Your customers could be two. You are a marketplace, right? On one hand, you have the investors that invested in you. On the other hand, you have the companies that you want to invest in and give them something that is very, you know, people don't know how to define it, which is added value. How you really help them, not just by writing a check, but by helping them the day after what we call portfolio success. So having this in mind um, caused me to, to think, what can make my next venture different? And how, as a person who knows the, 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 
the process of investing, but not necessarily an, an expert in every vertical or every domain exp expertise, how I can take this kind of thing instead of a weakness into a strength and how this, at the end of the day, will help the entrepreneurs. Take me a few years and back. The founding of the founding of, of this of what it turns out to be now today an amazing VC in Silicon Valley. But take me back a few years ago to where this vision started. So we didn't start to be honest, we didn't start exactly from how to build a new VC fund. We right. wanted to create a new community. So we wanted to connect Jews and Israelis because we thought that those are two different tribes. It's funny to think that way, but when you go to America, when you move to another country, you relocate, you realize that anywhere in America, New York or LA or Miami or Silicon Valley, we are talking about two different tribes. And Jim Carstein, my partner, who's one of the owners of Levi's and was the chairman of the Jewish Federation, is also, by the way, the chairman of uh, Berkeley Foundation and others. Um, we thought that the best way to bring people together is to show them a gateway to the best deals in Silicon Valley or Israel. So it's not bringing them together because they are Jewish or because they care. Most likely they don't care that much because otherwise they would come together. But no one can, can resist the opportunity to invest in the best companies and to invest with the best investors in Silicon Valley. So that was like the, the concept that we created that was a bit different. We wanted to create a, a, a brand new community that we select the investors that are part of it. They didn't have to pay. It was an angel club that you know no one had to pay. But we had few rules in that one. One is that we see very good companies that are VC backed always. We see, we, we bring things to the table that can really bring added value and expertise to those companies. And the people who are becoming what we called afterwards capitalist kibbutz, those are people who are bringing tons of um, mensch kind of feeling. They are, they, are, they are good people. People who, aside of their accomplished career in tech, in investments, in entrepreneurship, there are people who care about other things. They have a role in the community. They, they care about value. They care about more. Because when you switch down this model of, of a VC to, to active group of people, you first need to make sure that those are the people you want to hang up with, you want to be with. Right. Or our law that those are the people you want to spend three hours driving to anywhere else in the world. I love it. Now, if you look at the model that, that, you've, that you've come up with, so you're taking this group of people that are very mensch-like, right? And, and they're, they're people that want to be together. They want to do business together. Business creates trust. And you put them together and with synergy with amazing companies that are VC-backed. How, how does this transition then into an upside-down VC model that you have today? So, so the second thing, you asked me how it started. So there's another thing that is relevant. At a certain point, we realize it's not about Jews and Israelis, it's about Jews and Jews and Israelis. So the Jews themselves are very fragmented. The Jews in San Francisco don't know the Jews in New York, who don't know the Jews in Argentina. But on the other hand, when you look at it at business, and by the way, we didn't invent the wheel. This was the same thing for 2,000 years of diaspora. One of the things that kept us together was the business relationship, because business relationship create trust. And trust is something that we don't have in the Jewish world so much. The ones are Republicans or Democrats or J Street or APAC or BB or Guns, whatever. So, but, but from the business perspective, there's a lot of logic in it because Silicon Valley is very self-centered. People think that the companies, the markets are in Silicon Valley, but they are all over, right? When you want to do an industrial, it will be somewhere in the mid Midwest. Financial, it will be probably in Chicago or New York. If you want to do something in the movie industry, you probably need to go to LA. Or in the automotive industry, you'll have to go to Detroit. So, so the world is much, much fragmented for a reason. And we thought that if we connect the, the Jewish world, we should do it with different communities that each one brings its own go-to-market and expertise. Right. So that was the second thing that we wanted to create that is also not typical for a VC fund. So most of our investors are still in Silicon Valley. We have about 200 investors in Silicon Valley. We have also investors in Israel, but then they spread in about 30 different Jewish communities across the globe. 
up to Singapore and Australia and Argentina and Uruguay and Munich and Paris and London. So it's very, very broad. And in the USA, we have many different communities. So this is the second concept of what, what we wanted to achieve, a big new community that is in different locations and come together for two reasons. Why? Because of their identity. And second, because they see do good companies that can help them in, in any aspect of the growth. Product, VC introductions, go to market, in, uh, all the things that companies, HR, and, and now in, in these days when, when it's much more relevant to have something that is hybrid, right? You don't have to be in Silicon Valley anymore to build your company. You can, be, can build it anywhere. And you can have your employees anywhere and the market is everywhere and the funding is everywhere. Then it makes much more sense. We, we didn't predict that this will happen but eventually it helped us a lot because this is exactly the same model and vision that we had, but that we anticipated before. So those are the, 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 the first thing that came to us when we started thinking about it. But uh, the whole no. idea of the kibbutz is much bigger. I was just about to ask about that. This idea of the kibbutz, and, and you mentioned the word community, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley. Tell me about the, the, the community aspect, because community needs engagement in order to be a community. How does a venture capital fund create engagement with the community? And we're talking about a community of hundreds of people here. So, and, and this, is, this was a big challenge because also the people who invested in J Ventures, for example, we have 140 partners, current, right. former partners in VC funds, which is right. unheard of. I mean. People who are usually managing other people's money put their own money into J Ventures and actively helping those companies. We have from all the top tier in the US and many of the top tier in Israel. Um, we have also 100 uh, serial founders who already sold the company and they let us into the new company. So 14 out of our companies founded by our own LPs, which is also a different kind of model. And the third one is that we have about 100 50, 70 VP, C-level in a uh, Fortune 500 company. So, so if we look at this, this kind of uh, three buckets, it's very challenging. How do you get them to be engaged? You are looking at companies every day. They are involved with their own companies. I think that the secret for us was really to turn down this pyramid and, and make the GP more like Mazkir Kibbutz, the secretary of the kibbutz. <laughs> Truly. And the kibbutz is a platform that creates a lot of things. So we are together. And in this together, it means that it's amazing. We had 70% um, of J Ventures LPs are engaged on a monthly basis in our monthly meetings on Zoom. We couldn't meet in person because of COVID. But the fact that we have such a high conversion rate of, of engagement is amazing. But what is more amazing is that, and we just counted it, since the beginning of 2020, one, we had 180 of our LPs involved in due diligence on companies that we saw. So you, you, I'm talking about C-level in companies like Google, VMware, Intel, spending hours of their time that's worth much more than they even invested in that, involving and looking at companies and then helping them afterwards because this is the first engagement. The second part of the engagement is after. Uh, J Ventures launched a program called J Advisory that three of our LPs, uh, Guy Miaznik, uh, Harold Goldberg, and Aliza Peleg, are leading it. And we have 160 of our investors that are willing in every vertical, in, in automotive, in fintech, in cyber, in almost any vertical that you can imagine, otherwise we wouldn't invest, that can help the company and get direct compensation for this. So we completely changed the model of engagement. The third one is think tanks. So we bring them together. We have like, I don't know, let, let's say semiconductor. We have uh, 30 people who were VPC level, even number two, like Daddy Palamute at, at Intel or, or Sagib and Moshe or Amir Feintuch, of course, and others into, into one meeting every couple of months and ask them, what are the trends? Where do you want to go? Where do you advise our com companies? Where do you advise us to invest? So this creates a business kind of uh, interaction. But on the other hand, we create other programs that are not just about VC-like. One is J-Insight. So 
every month we invite one or two of our own LPs usually to speak about something that is about his own expertise or a panel. So we can bring uh, a panel about automotive. We have the chairman of Nicola, the CFO of Ford, the CEO of Frankster, speaking together where it's going. Or in, in, in uh, travel, we did the, the founder of Hotels.com, the board member of Booking, um, uh, uh, the founder of Inspirato, the founder of Travelocity. They're all part of J Ventures, and they talk where the future of, of travel is going to. Um, the other way, one is something that you initiated, by the way. It's called J Advisory, uh, J J Fellow. So, so, so the other way for us to interact and to create this engagement is also create priorities of what is important for us. It's a, it's a, it's a global Jewish Congress, if you want to call it. And this is something, by the way, that you you manage J Ventures with Dave. Um, okay. As it's something that you, as Bon Achid, tracked a mishpat as a So another way to to have this kind of engagement is creating a priority of what makes us so. What is important for us is a Jewish Congress, if you want, a global Jewish Congress, a new Jew, global Jewish Congress. And this is, by the way, something that you manage uh, and you and Dave initiated, which is called J Fellows, which is how we how we give something beyond just us is how we give the responsibility and the knowledge to the next generation. So our kids, you are also one of our kids, if you, although you're more mature. Um, our kids, we give them the torch to learn, to become a community of their own, to learn from the top of the top how to make investments, what is VC, what is what is innovation. It's much sexier than Ilel or other alternatives they have in college. And then they become a community. And from that community, we take them into another a, a initiative that Laura Lauder, our chairman of non-profit activity initiative, which is um, the um, J Philanthropy, which is taking this this wealth and this knowledge of people in J Ventures and give the responsibility to our next generation to lead um, supporting of non-profit organizations, just like startups. So sourcing, screening, and, and vetting and doing the due diligence. So it's it's a very holistic kind of kibbutz. The kibbutz has also other factories. We just initiated a new fund called J Impact that is only focused on impact investments and being managed by Ran Sanders, who's one of our LPs, and all the, the advisors are our LPs, and most of the investors are our LPs. So we have it's on one hand, it's a platform, just like a kibbutz, thinking a kibbutz that you have someone who has a, there's a factory for plastic and there's a factory for, for uh, cucumbers. And if there's an exit, both of them enjoy the, the fruits of it. 100%. So that, that's the concept of the kibbutz. It's another concept of the kibbutz. But, but the base thing of the kibbutz is instead of depending only on the GP's knowledge and the GP's access to deals, we are dependent on our own community that sold 2,600 deals a year. 86% of them are backed by VCs. I'm talking about the top tier VCs in Silicon Valley. We invested with uh, with all the big ones from uh, Sequoia, Koshlat, uh, Lightspeed, Oren Zev, uh, Andres Tonhovitz. We saw all of those kind of companies coming from those sources and, and they come from our own community. So 86% comes from with VC backed when they come to us and another about 40% are, are companies who are backed or, or founded by serial founders. So at the beginning, we see very good companies because if you, we have a very strong community without strong returns and strong deal flow, then it wouldn't work. It's, it's, a, it's a community that supports a strong fund, a strong fund supports a strong community. And if those two comes together, then we can give back to the community, right. which is J Philanthropy and other things. I have a question. Founders raise capital. They go to the GP or principal or associate. They meet with a few partners. They get introduced to the venture capital fund and then they sign the term sheet. That's not how it works with J Ventures. Founders come to the LP meeting. They, the screening itself is a whole different process that we don't even have time to go into. And they immediately get immersed with hundreds of, of our LPs in the meeting giving them feedback. Some of them you mentioned are partners in other VC funds. 
a lot of them are C-level executives, a lot of them are serial entrepreneurs themselves. What is the reception like? How do founders react when they're coming to talk to J Ventures and they're talking all of a sudden to, to 200 investors at the same time? That, that was something that also surprised me over the years. I mean, and, and it's usually when you're more advanced in your, if you're a serial founder, you will more appreciate it than the first time founder. First time founder has this, his own fears about who's going to see, what is going to say, how people will react. As more mature you are, you take the benefits. And people are, keep in mind that all the companies who present to us already have VCs behind them. Right. Sometimes top tier VCs. Just tomorrow we have a meeting, a company that is backed by Koshla, for example, or a company that is, is backed by General Catalyst. The, so, so for them, and, and I think it's, it's very mature of them, and mostly from the Israeli side, I see this maturity coming in because the Americans ones really understand it very perfectly. But from the Israeli ones, it's, it's more recent that we see that they understand that presenting to a group like this can, can make a huge jump for them already, even from the feedback, because they want to know what is the market fit, what is the, um, the product fit. They want to know what, how Silicon Valley looks at them. They want to see how the, the customers look at them. They want to understand things that otherwise it would take them much longer time to see. So they appreciate the feedback and the feedback is fast. I mean, it's like 10 minutes of question and answer is just to have a feeling of the company on both sides. 100%. But then, but then we, we build the due diligence team and the due diligence team is the secret because we bring those top guys to be involved in the actual due diligence and to lead the due diligence with a professional team of J Ventures with our principals and associates. And at that point, they meet the best of the best. For example, we just looked at, uh, at the company that is in the insurance company. Well, we, we have a few companies in the insurance space and it came into the situation where the, the people on the due diligence, one of them was doing pilot with this company. So, and the other one, the company wanted to have a pilot with. So this is the first, like intimate way that they find the best experts they could. And from there, what happens is the J advisory gets into action and then they pick the people they want to be their advisors. So for example, last week we did a meeting of 24 people in the FinTech world with a company th this time in Israel that wanted to get our opinion of, of several issues considering the American market. 24 people that were VP, C, C level in different fintech companies, giving them feedback, listening to them, but also the next day, opening the doors for them, meeting one-on-one -on -one with them. So for the company, it's like, the company's feedback, I think, and we saw it over the years, is that we are the smallest investor that brings the, the highest added value. And the added value is something that is so unclear for entrepreneurs. And, and many VCs at the end, either say they have added value or they, they say, we are a good check. We know how to pick the right entrepreneurs and it's good for them. But right. as a former entrepreneur and the founder that I met, they feel that this is missing. They need something beyond that. They need sometimes really help. And they are a very good example in, in Silicon Valley, by the way. Upwest did an amazing job with helping those kind of companies coming to the US market. Um, we saw it with Icon that helps companies to come to the US market. I'm, I'm one of the founders of Icon and very proud of it. But J Ventures is taking it in a very different, it's really involvement of those people. And, and the, the outcome, almost in all the companies, we bought the next round, we bought the HR people, I mean, recruiting the right people to the company. We help them with the product. We have them with the go-to-market. In some companies, we are responsible for third of their revenues right now, which is unheard of. But they also got the notion of what's going on in Silicon Valley. They felt a bridge that it, otherwise it would be very hard for them to get. But still, by the way, 40% of our investments are Silicon Valley, pure Silicon Valley, and they still feel they need it. So even in Silicon Valley, you don't feel always that you get connected and not necessarily get connected outside of Silicon Valley, which is also important. 100%. Oded, 
Uh, I have to say, you know, having been a, a part of J Ventures for, for quite some time from the early days, a uh, incredible journey. And, uh, and I think that, you know, a lot of the insights that you're sharing today, they weren't so clear in the beginning. It was really an experiment. And uh, it turned, this experiment turned out to be uh, incredible. And I think that a lot of people were, were not surprised, but were shocked by how amazing it is. And you know, every time that I, that I come to a session filled with energy, whether it's in person with Orange Schoolmas and Paul Alter, or whether it's via Zoom with hundreds of people at the same time, looking at great companies, it, it, it really is a community. And, I, and uh, I think a lot about this question of how do you create a good community? And how do you create a, an engaged community with some of the busiest people in the world? Some of them who are running companies that are, that are already in unicorn status. Some of them are running a, a funds that are managing billions of dollars. And still, they want to come to these meetings and, and work together in a community. They're changing their flights to come to the meetings. They, they when it was in person before COVID, they used to change their flights. I remember, flights I remember those stories. And it was, um, I think that it taught me a very big lesson on, on you know, what it means to build a community, but what it means to be in the right group of people. And to, and you know, then I, I, we also said no to people. We also said no right. to people that we didn't, but, but we have, I'll tell you what, two things that I want to mention to you. One is that we have, we have, for example, 12, 12 brothers who invested. A brother bought another brother. We have, we have other kind of siblings or, or, or cousins that coming together. We have uh, people who've been together in the room. They were roommates in college. We have father and son, also some examples that you know. But so, so there's a notion, a strong notion of community. I mean, if a father and son coming together, two brothers bringing each other, this is very strong. But it was, you, you nailed it. It was an experiment. When we had the first angel group, it was an experiment. The second fund, the first fund was also an experiment. Now we, just today, we had the third exit out of, uh, uh, of 17 companies and, and 15 companies raised more money in, in no time. Um, and this is a very successful uh, fund.